It's April 2020's Vinyl Update. Ahoy hi everybody and welcome to my Vinyl Update for April 2020. Uh, it's not going to be an autograph on this month, but one thing I was expecting didn't turn up anyway. It's still to come. Um, and I did miss one on last month's autograph update, but I'll carry that forward. Okay, so vinyl. Um, didn't know what was going to be happening this month, basically, purchase-wise. Obviously, no record shops are physically open. Uh, so I was relying on online, as it is, as you've just seen, have bought quite a bit. I'll explain as I go where I got them from and why. Uh, first thing I'm going to show is actually something I won. Now, I'm a member of a, well, of a few Prince Facebook groups, as you can probably guess. Uh, one of which I'm not allowed to mention because it's a secret group. But one of the members of that group very kindly was having a clear out and found a spare copy of this, which is the German Rolling Stone magazine that came out in October 2018 and cover mounted was an exclusive 70 inch single this was done to promote the piano and a microphone release and first side is 17 days piano version from that release remember b side is the normal single edit of 1999 uh, so i'd never got to get this you had to order it from rolling stone germany but you didn't just pay, they sent you an invoice that you then had to pay and it was very complicated so I never got around to getting it. Um, but it was just a giveaway, you just um, put your name down to say that you were interested. He did a draw, one of these online Wheel of Fortune type things and for, luckily mine came up and he very kindly sent it to me. Uh, nice article in there as well and Obviously it's all in German, but there's some nice pictures. And he also had some spare vinyl stickers. Uh, Prince's Yes logo from the Life Sexy era. And a couple of symbols that I will make use of. But yeah, and it's also got a CD inside as well. Uh, but yes, I haven't taken it off. I can't decide. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to take it off the magazine. I probably will in the end. Okay, now everything is new apart from two eBay purchases which obviously will become apparent as I get to them. So first up uh, the little is two or three online record shops that are basically the same shop with different shop fronts as uh, recordstore.co.uk, U Music and the Sound of Vinyl they're all interlinked and they've been doing for the last month or so and they're still doing a deal of the day where they put up an album um, cheap basically and I've been picking up a few of those and the first one I picked up was Marvin Gaye's What's Going On this was 8 99 I think plus postage an album I've been intending to pick up anyway it's going to be part of my first listen to classic albums series because I've never heard the album cardboard inner and obviously it's on Tamla none of these have been cleaned or anything so you'll see it's most of them have still got the little bits of paper from the inner sleeves stuck to them with static uh, and this has also got download code. Uh, dropped. Okay. Yep, so happy to pick that up at a good price. This I read about on it's Rhubarb's forum, which is primarily a cult and classic TV forum. But they've also got music section. And a few months somebody mentioned this album. It's an album put out by Electronic Sound music uh, magazine they release a magazine that regularly has 70 singles on it but they've also released a few albums and this is one of them and I just like the idea of it 
So I had it bookmarked for a while and then when I had a bit of spare cash I've ordered it. And this is the top of the poppers sing and play the hits of David Bowie. And what this is is the nine David Bowie tracks that appeared on the Top of the Pops compilation albums which most of you will be familiar with particularly if you're my age or older um, but throughout I think they started in the late 60s and they stopped in the early 80s uh, Richard McCook will know more because I believe he has them all but they released they were a budget label that released hits of the day sort of once every couple of months I think it was but they were all re-recordings and none of them were by the original artists but they never sort of mentioned that so when you were young and impressionable you'd walk in and see this album with a picture of an attractive lady on the cover and think oh that's got the man who sold the world on it I like that song I'll buy that get it home put it on that's not David Bowie but yeah they were hugely popular as you can tell by the length of time they ran hugely popular series of albums but yeah None of this, as I say, has been cleaned or listened to. I like this certainly sounded interesting. And this is on purple vinyl as well. Which did add to the appeal, because regulars will know I'm a sucker for a coloured vinyl. Yeah, so this has got the top of a pops version in of Starman, Life on Mars, Sorrow, The Man Who Sold the World. TBC 15, Space Oddity, Heroes, Boys Keep Swinging, and Fashion. But yeah, looking forward to giving that a spin. Okay, HMV had a sale on at Easter, a vinyl sale, some really good prices. Picked up, oh, I think I initially had about a dozen things in my basket, but I whittled it down and I picked up. Who's next? I can't remember exactly what these cost. They varied between, I think the cheapest was eight ninety nine, and the dearest was something like seventeen ninety nine for a double album. But they're all stuff I wanted. Uh, yeah, so who's next? The classic Who's album. I might put this in my first listens too. I've never actually heard the album, but obviously I do know a lot of the tracks on it. I'll probably put it in the first listens too. Uh, track record. Yeah, really pleased to pick that up. Parliament, Chocolate City. So I don't own any Parliament. I've got Funkadelic CDs and I've got George Clinton, his Paisley Park MPG record at records albums but don't own any parliament so happy to pick this up for a decent price it's only one o'clock in the afternoon and it's getting really grey outside uh, there's the inner and on Casablanca don't think I know any of the tracks. I might recognise them when I hear them because obviously a lot of the Parliament and Funkadelic tracks you sort of know through samples etc. Anything fell down there? No. Uh, also uh, the Kinks of a Village Green Preservation Society. Really happy to pick this up. I think this was the most expensive one. I think this was the 1799 one um, which I lied because it's not a double album but this is for special Art of the Album 50th Anniversary release. Nice gatefold. So again, might put this in my classic albums. You know, it's an album I wanted for my Kinks collection, but it's an album I've never heard. Uh, yeah, so this special edition has got a nice little small booklet about the album. And details of a remastering etc. See I know the title track purely from whatever sitcom it was that used it as a theme tune. Was it Jam and Jerusalem? Might have been. Uh, 
Yeah, see, I think that's the only track that I know. I might, I'm probably a couple of others are on the Kinks best of that I've got CD, but the titles aren't familiar. That's some pie, replica of the original label. Now this comes in a polyline sleeve, which is handy. Yeah, another one I'm really glad to have picked up. Get in. Uh, still with the HMV cell, I picked up Slow Hand, Eric Clapton's album. Uh, years and years and years ago, I had this on cassette. I might still have it up in my loft. Uh, so I am familiar with the album. This is the. 35th anniversary edition, newly remastered, and this has got a download code as well. But yeah, one of these classic albums got cocaine on it, Wonderful Tonight, Lay Down Sally. Uh, on Polydor, custom label. 180 gram vinyl. Polyline sleeve, all the good things. Uh, get in. Uh, still, Papa Sale, I picked up the new Who album, Who, or the new The Who album, Who, to be correct. This, haven't heard anything from this, but I know most people were pleasantly surprised by it. Uh, this has got download code as well. Ooh, some Polydor. Still, it's the last of the uh, HMV ones. This was an album recommended to me for my First Listens 2 series. Uh, I'm it's Hot Rats by Frank Zappa. I don't think I've ever heard any Frank Zappa. Obviously, I'm very aware of him and his history and everything. But I don't think I've ever heard any of his music. Or if I have, it's only the odd track. Uh, this is the 50th anniversary on translucent hot pink vinyl. But he's somebody I've always been curious about. I know he's a bit love him or hate him. So we shall see. Nice, nice translucent pink, as it says, on Zappa Records. And Barking Pumpkin Records. Again, Polyline Slave. Yeah, so that was the HMV Hall. And this is one of the two pre loved records I bought. This is an eBay purchase. This is the 12 inch maxi single of Prince's new Power Generation from the Graffiti Bridge soundtrack. Uh, so I have this on CD, but this has got. One, two, three, four, five, six tracks. But five of which are. No, in fact, they all are. They're all remixes. I was going to say one of the first track is New Power Generation, but even that's a remix of it. Uh, the first three are pretty much proper remixes. The second side, they tend to deviate a lot. Prince did a few maxi singles between 89 and 90. Four, really, where he just sort of used the song, the title track, as a starting off point, and he'd basically write completely new songs that just got a hint of the original or a lyric or something from the original in them. Uh, and this is one of them. One of those three is Get Off. That's Get with one T as opposed to the single from the next album, Diamonds and Pearls. 
which was two T's, but it is a very early, I mean, it's not much similarity, but it is an early version of that. Okay, now my local record shops, a slice of vinyl, who I've talked about on here many a time and shown hauls from and recently talked about them, obviously the effect of the virus on them. Uh, after initially deciding he wasn't going to sell online because he didn't want to risk sending stuff out and getting people contracting the virus off of the post, basically, he's sort of He's gone back on that a bit, he's realised A, he needs to, and B, it's not that bad. That risky. Um, so he's started a website, asiceofvinyl.co.uk, and he's got his Discogs page up and running again. Uh, and I've done a couple of orders from there, partly because he had stuff I wanted, and partly to keep him going. Uh, so first up, I picked up Miles Ahead, Miles Davis plus 19. Or is it miles ahead? I'm never quite sure what the plus 19 refers to. Is it the 19 people on it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And if you count the 11s, yeah, I suppose that's it's just the 19 people who play on it. Uh, I've only got this album for the first time. Oh, that was the start of this year I think it was when I found the CD of it in a charity shop even though it's my favourite era of Miles Davis the G11's era um, but having picked up the rest of that era on vinyl as well as CD I thought I'd add this it's probably my least favourite of those four albums but I've only had it for once so it may grow on me even more but I still loved it uh, yeah, so I picked that one up. That's uh, £18. This is, again, for my classic album series. But it's an album I've always been intrigued by. And that's Velvet Underground and Nico. And obviously this is a new reissue. Does it say when it's from? No. Uh, it's got the peelable banana that's designed by Andy Warhol so I'm faintly familiar I'm waiting for the man I know uh, heroin I sort of know I, I think I have heard it a couple of times but it's often compared to Prince's The Cross Princess the Cross is often compared to Heroin rather, because obviously that's the way around they were released. Uh, vinyl Lovers release, nice 180 gram virgin vinyl, polyline sleeve. Uh, All Tomorrow's Parties, I've got a feeling I've heard once. Venus in Furs, I think I've heard once. I mean, you know, my main knowledge of Velvet Underground is from the tracks that Bowie covered. Uh, this has got a bonus track of Chelsea Girls on it. Which is, I believe, Nico's version of the Bob Dylan song. Uh, it came, I don't know if this replicates how it was originally released, but it had a sort of a peel off bit of plastic at the top. I don't, I presume it isn't, because I wouldn't imagine uh, wrapping them in plastic in the 60s, but I don't know. Uh, but yeah, happy to have got that. That was 20 quid. And. Uh, Time Out, Take 5, Blue, or featuring, Time Out, featuring Take 5, Blue Rondo, Ella Turk, Love a Day, Brew Rec Quartet. This is an album that was recommended to me a long time ago, before my, my series. Um, I think it was back when I showed off that I picked up Kind of Blue on Blue Vinyl. I think, I think it was Paul Aiden. Instead, I need to, to, to pick this one up. And there's one other, I can't remember what it was. Uh, so I've been keeping my eye out for this. I did find it secondhand once, but it was very expensive. So uh, when Kieran listed this, I think it was 15, something like that. 
I nabbed that straight away. Uh, yeah, probably put it in my classic album series. And also for my Who collection, uh, I forgot what it's called, Face Dances. That's Peter Blake designed cover. Uh, obviously, I know you better, you bet. I think that's the only track I know from this. This has got poster of the artwork. And then lyrics on the inner. On Polydor, upside down, but you get the gist. Okay, then where did I get that from? Oh, this um, super deluxe edition highlighted that HMV had a deal on for Pink Floyd The Wall. This only cost me 17 quid. Uh, not HMV, uh, um, Amazon rather. From Amazon. So, although I've still. Uh, uh, you may be aware I've picked up Wish You Were Here, but I've still only listened to Dark Side of the Moon so far, so I'm still undecided on Pink Floyd. More on that, go back to my first listen to Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, but I knew I'd want to get this anyway, regardless of how Wish You Were Here made me feel. Most of you are familiar with how this looks. Uh, so obviously I know comfortably numb, but as I've mentioned before, at this stage of time I still prefer the Scissor Sisters version, but it is the version I heard first. Uh, and I know the old brick in the wall part, whatever it is, that's the, the hit version, part three, part two, part two I think, was the single. Uh, I'm not sure I know anything else on here. Uh, this is the second pre-loved. Again, another eBay. This is a seven-inch single of Prince of Revolution's Pop Life, Back with Girl. Uh, it's only cost me three quid, I think, plus postage. And it's a really good condition one. So I was happy with that, but it was one that I needed. It's not a not a spare, it is the first time I've owned that on 7 inch. Okay, then back to the. So there's a high. I don't know if the microphone picked that up, but there was a high pitched noise there. I think it was Mum's telly. Um, where was I? Yeah, back to the record store, the online record shops deals of the day. This was another one. This was Villar's self titled. An only proper album. Uh, again, I think this was eight ninety nine. An album regularly gets cited as a classic, so this will be going in my, in my first listen to series. Uh, obviously, I know where she goes. I can't believe there's anybody on the planet who doesn't know where she goes. Certainly not anybody in the UK. Uh, it's got download code as well. Uh, this was also in one of those deals of the day. This was eleven ninety nine, but it's a double album. So I have this on CD, but because I've got the subsequent two albums, uh, Redemption, Revelation, whatever the next one's called, Revelation, Redemption, something like that, and Lover on vinyl, I thought I'd get, grab this whilst it was cheap. I really do like Taylor Swift. I haven't gone back to her early stuff but certainly a uh, pop stuff I really enjoy. Uh, just standard black vinyl. So this album 1989 contains uh, Shake It Off, probably the best known track on it. Uh, Bad Blood, Blank Space, I think there was another single from it, but I can't remember which one it was. Yeah, really strong album. 
Again, polyline sleeves, which is good. No download codes with this, but I've got it on CD, so it's not an issue. Uh, then one of them, this wasn't a deal of a day, but they were having a sale on and they listed these two. Uh, this Tears of Fears song from a big chair. I think these were both a tenor. Um, this has been recommended for my first listens too. I was going to do it, no problem. But then when I was in Slice of Vinyl just before the lockdown, he was playing this, so I have now heard this album. But because I didn't actually sit and listen to it properly, it was just on in the background while we were chatting, I'm still going to do it as part of my classic album series. But obviously I am now vaguely familiar with it. I do like Tears for Fears. I have their greatest hits on CD and uh, Sowing the Seeds on CD. It's got Shout, Everybody Wants to Rule the World and Head Over Heels with big songs on this. Uh, I can't remember if I said but this has got download code as well. And the other one which will also go in my classic album series is Massive Attacks, uh, what was it called, Blue, Blue Lines. Uh, I'm familiar with Unfinished Sympathy but don't think familiar with others. Not really the sort of stuff I listen to, the sort of stuff I you know find you know I like Unfinished Symp Sympathy. I always want to say symphony on that. Uh, but it's never, as I say, never really the sort of stuff I would buy. But it's always on the, especially Q Magazine, always stick it in there. Classic British albums and top albums of all time, top albums of the 90s, etc. It's always near the top. So I thought I would give that a go. And then. Are these all? Yeah, these last lot. Uh, another batch from Slice of Vinyl. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to go about showing this first one. Okay, I'll show the back first of all. So this is the Blind Faith album. Uh, and those of you who are familiar with the album will know why I'm dubious about showing the cover. I'll probably just flip it over in a minute just to cover the necessary bits. Uh, so this was a super group formed by Eric Clapton, Steve Winwood, Ginger Baker and Rick Gretsch. Uh, they just did the one album and I think there's a live album of them in Hyde Park, I think. But I'm not sure if that came out at the time or later. Uh, don't think I know. Oh, Presence of the Lord, I know. I think that's on one of the compilations. But otherwise I don't really know this, but partly for my Clapton collection and partly just because it is a classic album. This isn't going to go in my classic album series. Uh, but yes, the reason dubious is because it has a naked prepubescent child on the cover, basically. He dropped this in both of my deliveries, he dropped into work for me and I, I, I was glad that there was nobody around who could sort of, who might have been curious to look in the bag. <laughs> they might have thought, what am I actually buying that for? Uh, it's on RSO. And comes with download code. Uh, this one I nearly picked up previous time because I need it for my Blondie collection. This is The Hunter. Uh, Island of Lost Souls is on here which was a hit. It's also got For Your Eyes Only which is a song that they put forward as a theme tune to For Your Eyes Only but was rejected. Uh, I have heard that and it's floating around on YouTube. Obviously this is a modern reissue on Back to Black with a download code. Uh, it turns out, he told me when he dropped it off, this was actually the first album that he ever bought for the shop. And he's had it. Uh, when did he open? January last year. And I think and he was trading on market stores before that. And I think this is even from men. So he's had this a long time and he thought he never was going to get rid of it. But I proved him wrong. Uh, another Miles Davis. This is Miles Davis Octet live in 1989 at the Coach House San Juan Capistrano. And this has got four tracks on it. Mr. Pastorius, Time After Time, Crash Bump Funk and Tutu. Time After Time is the cover of the um, Cindy Lauper song. 
which obviously I'm very familiar with Miles's version of, although not the live one. Yet yeah, this was like this when I opened it, but it's obviously you know uh, packaged. You know when it was packaged. In, what's, what's the phrase I'm looking for? <laughs> when it was made, anyway. <laughs> um, an error there, but the actual it's polyline sleeve, and that's fine, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, what is it? Two tracks? Or so? No, two two fills upside two on its own, which is the title track of that album, and I'm familiar with that. The other two aren't ringing bells, but I think they're from that time. And finally, uh, you say thank God because it's half an hour long. This Kieran got in, and he was selling off for tenor as his album of the month. And this is the second album by Haim, Everything to Tell You, or Haim, I think it's Haim. Uh, three Sisters from America somewhere. I want to say California, but I might be wrong. Let's say this is their second album. I've actually uh, ordered their third album, signed CD from Amazon, which is due out next month, I think it is, or June, one of the two. I uh, haven't got their first album. Don't really know that much of their work. I've heard the odd track on the radio and liked them. I know they're big Prince fans, so that was an influence. Uh, but yeah, for tenor, I thought I'd give it a go anyway. Uh, this is two LPs, pressed at 45 RPM on audio file value. And it's got bonus track and digital download. Nice inner sleeves with lyrics and lots of pictures. On Polydor, rather plain but colour coded labels. Uh, it's not 100, nowhere near 180 gram vinyl, but just looks quality enough. Yep, so that is it. That's my pickups for this month. Probably more than I thought I would get. Certainly the most new vinyl I think I've ever bought. Pleased with a lot of those pickups. Uh, I'm still ke keeping my eyes on the deals of the day. I've got one more order that's not been dispatched yet. So we'll see what else comes up. I have also got, which came a couple of days ago, 270-inch singles. A uh, couple of eBay wins from the same seller that's all arrived. I'm just about to film an unboxing of those. I've no idea what's in them, um, but stay tuned. They'll probably start going up next week over, I think, how long it takes two or four videos. But yeah, um, I say, don't know what I'm going to buy this coming month. The pr new Prince reissues were bumped from April, should be coming out. I think it's May 20th, I think they're due now. We'll see if that happens. Uh, it was announced yesterday that Record Store Day, which right, wasn't going to be till June anyway, has been bumped even further, so that means I don't have to save. Um, so that's another incentive to buy stuff, and also it looks like it's almost certainly London Film and Comic Con isn't going to be happening. But even if it is, I don't think I'm going to go, not with all this going on. So that's another thing I don't have to say for. Anyway, that's enough waffle because this is long enough. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you're all well. Stay safe. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks. Bye. <music>